Hi everybody, how you doing? My name is Tom. This is the first video in a long series of videos about programming and more specifically programming in Python. Now, the whole series, this, this part and the other parts that you might see on the website, uh, they are geared more towards high school students that are taking the AP, the IB, or the CIE uh, exams at some point. So if you're in one of those computer science programs in high school, this course is for you. If you're not, you're still going to learn a lot, so just follow along. And go ahead and skip the parts that seem to be more high school dependent. And those are the parts where I'm going to pull out exam questions from all these different past exams. And I'm going to go over them and show you how you can get full marks. Now, most of this stuff at the moment is uh, going to be from the CIE exam. But later on, I'll try to add some questions from the IB and the AP exams as well. Okay? So this first uh, section of videos is the introductory concepts. And the introductory concepts, there's absolutely no programming, and I will get you set up with a, an editor and with Python by the time we're done. But this first video and the first actual couple of videos, I'm just going to talk about what programming is, what it means uh, to be a programmer, or more importantly, what it means when you finished your whole program and you can say that I have experience as a computer scientist. So that's the first thing I want to talk about, is what's the difference between a programmer, so if we have a programmer and we have a computer scientist. Okay, so you might think these are almost the same thing, and sometimes they actually are the same thing. So, computer scientist versus programmer. Now, a programmer can be a computer scientist, and a computer scientist can be a programmer. But for someone who is a computer scientist, there's generally a different level of training than somebody who is just a programmer. Now that's not to say that in either of them you're not going to get uh, elements of each. There's a lot of crossover between the two. Uh, and the generalizations I'm going to make here they might seem a little bit broad and you might you might be saying, hey, wait a second, I'm a computer scientist and I do those same things that a programmer does. Why am I not a programmer? Well, the thing is, you are. You are a programmer. But if you are just a programmer and you've never had computer science training, you generally don't have a four-year degree as a computer scientist. If you've taken a four-year degree in the CS program, then you're a computer scientist. So I'm going to put here four plus year degree okay so you either have four years six years or maybe you did your PhD in computer science if you're just a programmer you you might be somebody like an engineer that had mechanical or electrical or any type of engineer and they have to take a certain number of programming classes when they're in school it doesn't make them a computer scientist but it will make them a programmer so a lot of those people uh, maybe they go into the industry and they become a programmer. Even though their background's mechanical engineering, they're probably self-taught. Uh, or maybe they did something like a boot camp. So, so if you're like an uh, electrical engineer and you've taken a few Java classes and you get hired out of university and you are hired as a programmer, uh, not as a computer scientist. Uh, so the next thing I, I want to talk about here is that a programmer is generally dealing with uh, putting things into practice. They're actually building software. Okay, so they deal much more with the practical side of things, while a computer scientist is dealing often with the uh, the theory. Okay, so practical versus theory. So I, I've heard it said that a computer scientist. If you can do the problem on paper, uh, then you're doing computer science. If you have to have a computer to do the problem, you're a programmer. And that means you can switch back and forth, put on your computer science hat, put on your programmer hat, depending on what thing you're doing. Okay, so a computer scientist, they generally have a, a background uh, that's going to teach them a whole bunch of different things. Like, uh, for example, they might do an algorithms class or they might know a lot about algorithms, or they might have done stuff with automata, and, and other things. And so this, this side over here 
is a lot more mathematical. Yeah, I'm going to erase that part there. So that, that might scare some people. They might say, oh, I hate math. I've taken this computer science class because I don't want to do math. Well, if you are going to be a programmer, you usually don't have to worry about this, this stuff as much. If you're a computer scientist, you will have a heavy mathematical background. When you get to university, you're going to need to take some higher level math classes because a lot of the stuff you learn relies on that math. So in many ways, computer science kind of is the application of a lot of the things you learn in those math classes. So it could be discrete math or linear algebra. Uh, those two are heavily used in computer science. Okay. So once again, programmer, self-taught bootcamp, more practical side of things. Computer scientist deals more with the theory uh, and things like that. There's a good quote from, from Dijkstra that says that, Computer science is no more about computers than astronomy is about telescopes. So it's kind of, what he's saying is that in astronomy, you use telescopes, but just because you use a telescope doesn't make you an astronomer. And in the same way in computer science, just because you use programming languages, uh, or if a programmer, sorry, uses programming languages, doesn't necessarily mean that they're a computer scientist. Okay? So... A computer scientist, programmer, their jobs often overlap. They do a lot of the same stuff, but there's some differences. Okay. Now, one thing that they both do is solve problems. And more often than not, they solve problems in the same way. So let's say I have a problem. And let's make this problem something real. Now, when I was in university my I think this is my second year in university I got an internship and the internship was if, you, if you've if you're in university now or if you have somebody who's been in university internships and interns sometimes they get interesting work but oftentimes they get a lot of what we call grunt work or just uh, not necessarily busy work but the work that other people don't want to do and the problem that they had was there was this set of set of data here and they had these scripts and a script is a little little program that runs stuff and these what it did was take this data and it put it into uh, these files that you could then run to load the database so what I was really doing was I was loading some database here so here's my little database icon. I was using data and loading a database. I'd run these scripts, I'd make some changes, and then I'd go ahead and put the information in the database. And then the, the programmers and the other people, they could use that information to uh, test their programs. Okay, so the problem was is there was about a thousand scripts, and these scripts I had to make little changes each time, and I had to pull those changes from a spreadsheet. Now, I had a, about two years experience and I, I understood a little bit about programming. I was okay with programming. I'd been teaching myself before university. And so I looked at this and said, well, this is pretty mindless work. Myself and another intern or two were doing this. Uh, each week we'd redo everything and have to do it, and put all the information in again and they do it. Now, I was only there a couple days but I, I realized I, I didn't really want to waste my time doing this. And looking back, you kind of, maybe it seemed kind of silly because I was going to put myself out of a job by doing it. But what I did was I found a way to automate this. I found a way to use something called uh, Perl, which is a scripting language that's still used, not quite as much as it used to be, but it's still used uh, for mostly web stuff. And I used Perl to automate my job. So essentially those thousand scripts... I used the spreadsheet, loaded the information into those thousand scripts, ran all the scripts, got the output, and then used that output to load the database. And I had a script that would take the job that normally took myself and a couple other people about uh, two to three days to actually do. I was able to do it in about five minutes. Okay? So that's pretty much what 
programmers and computer scientists do. Now, a computer scientist, as I said before, they could take that idea, they could sketch it out on paper, and they could really solve the problem without having to do it on paper. So in this case, I was a programmer more than a computer scientist, but I was thinking in many ways like a computer scientist is, how can I solve a problem? How can I take this and break it into little pieces and sketch out a flow from the, from the start to the end? Okay, so you take a problem and oftentimes you put it into code and of course you're going to get your result. Now this result can be a lot of different things. It can be an actual answer. Um, it can be some sort of output such as a new spreadsheet or something like that. And it could be actually, you could get nothing out of it. You might just get uh, a null, what we call a null answer, which means it doesn't work, nothing's happened. Now, that can give you just as much information as an actual numerical answer or some output as a file or anything like that. Okay, so maybe this is a file. Or maybe this is, a, I don't know, loading a database or something. Okay. Yeah, let me get rid of that there. All right, capital DB for a database. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much the difference between a computer scientist and a programmer, and this is what they do. This is all a programmer does most every single day. Take a problem, write some code, get an output. Take a problem, write some code, get some output. Okay, and so depending on what type of problem you're solving, you're gonna get a different type of output. Okay, all right, so in the next video, we're gonna take a look at this middle section, this code part here. And we're going to see what is it, what do I mean by code? What is code? What are different programming languages? Things like that. What do I mean when I say write some code? All right. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.